What is going on, YouTube? This is Arctic Fox. Welcome back to the channel. Today, I, I'm going to touch on a case that I'm almost certain all of you have heard about at some point, unless you've been living underneath a rock somewhere, and that is the missing persons case of Baby Joe, otherwise known as Joe Clyde Daniels. Uh, he is an autistic little boy that went missing out of Dixon, Tennessee, on April the 4th of 2018. Um, he was only five years old at the time of his disappearance. He would be 10 years old today if he's still alive. Uh, it is presumed that he's deceased and his father has actually been charged in his death. However, uh, Joe Clyde's body has never been found to this day. Uh, he was four feet tall and weighed between 50 and 60 pounds at the time of his disappearance with blonde hair and blue eyes. Now, Joseph is autistic and nonverbal. He struggled with some physical tasks because of his condition. Uh, he had some nicknames, most notably are Joe and Baby Joe. Uh, most people refer to him as Joe Clyde Daniels. Uh, at the time of his disappearance, he was wearing black pajamas with a picture of a skeleton on the front. He was last seen at his home on Garners Creek Road in Dixon, Tennessee on April the 4th of 2018 at about 6.30 a.m. Now, his father, Joseph Ray Daniels, called 911. He said that his son was missing. He said that he and his wife went to wake Joe up for school at 5.20 a.m. and found him gone then searched their home and property for an hour before calling police. He speculated that this autistic five-year-old child had somehow unlocked the door and wandered outside in the night, which it is possible. I mean, we, we've seen autistic kids do things like this before. Autistic children tend to be escape artists, in fact. Now, on the 7th of April, Joseph was charged with criminal homicide in baby Joe's disappearance and presumed death. On the 9th of April, baby Joe's mother, Crystal Nicole Daniels, was also charged with aggravated child neglect, criminal responsibility, and filing a false report. Their marriage was troubled, and Crystal had been having an affair, which Joseph knew of, and was considering a divorce. Joseph did not believe that Joe Clyde was his biological child, and called him that boy when speaking about him. When he was interviewed by authorities while on videotape, Joseph initially strongly denied having spanked or hit his son. He said he woke up in the night and found out that Joe had urinated on the floor and sent his son back to bed. However, about 30 minutes into questioning, Joseph admitted something happened and that he had spanked Joseph or Joe several times and then said that he got Joe outside and chased him down the street. So, in the process of this interrogation, more information comes out. Joseph subsequ subsequently changed his statement again and said after one of his other children told him that Joe had urinated on the floor. Joseph tried to send all of the children back to bed, but baby Joe started laughing, so he beat the child. That's when he ran out the front door. Baby Joe ran into the road, and he claims that he saw a car drive by, and he ran out and got him back into the house when he proceeded to beat him some more, and that's when he killed baby Joe. So there's about three or four different stories that Joseph Daniels has told about what happened to Joe Clyde and the circumstances surrounding his disappearance. Joseph did say that the beating happened in the living room, but none of Joe Clyde's blood was found there, which is inconsistent with his account of what happened. He said that he beat Joe Clyde over the course of 15 to 20 minutes, he said he hit his son with a closed fist several times on his head, as well as a few times on his face, and also threw Joe onto the floor and against a coffee table. 
He told different stories as to what he had done with Joe's body. At one point, he said that he had put it in a field, and other times he said that he had thrown it off a bridge or put it into a pond. Now, Crystal admitted that she was present when her son was killed. She said that she heard a scream, and then it went silent, and that she saw Joseph standing over Joe Clyde. Joe Clyde was lying on the floor, and Joseph had his fists clenched. Joseph threatened to kill Crystal if she ever told anyone what she had seen. So she went back into the bedroom, and then she heard a car door shut. She went back out of the bedroom, and Joe, as well as Joe Clyde, were gone. Uh, or Joe and Joseph were gone. Uh, Joseph subsequently recanted his confession. In October of 2018, while he was in custody awaiting trial for his son's presumed death, he wrote a letter to his parents telling them that he thought that Joe Clyde was still alive and that Crystal had abandoned him by the roadside or given him to another man to care for. Although Joseph's attorney argued the confession was coerced and tried to get it removed from evidence, the confession and other statements Joseph had made while in custody were admitted into evidence at the murder trial. Joseph's stepson, Alex, who was eight years old at the time of Joe Clyde's disappearance and shared a bedroom with him, testified at the trial. Alex said that he had woken up twice during the night Joe Clyde disappeared. The first time, Joe Clyde had urinated on the floor, and Joseph beat him. Both boys went back to sleep eventually, but then Alex woke up to a loud bang. He left the bedroom and saw Joe Clyde lying on the ground. He saw Joseph pick up Joe Clyde and carry him out the back door. Joe Clyde's younger brother and aunt were in the living room at the time, and Crystal was in the kitchen. Alex said that he had snuck out of the house and followed his stepfather outside. Joseph saw him and threatened to kill Alex if he didn't help. So Alex helped his stepfather by opening the door to a gray car, and then Joseph told him to go back inside the house. Alex continued to watch for a few minutes, however, and saw Joseph carrying Joe Clyde down the driveway, turn right, and walk down the road. The next day, Joseph told Alex that Joe Clyde had run away. In his testimony, Alex admitted that he had initially told a false story to the police and saying that he had not seen anything unusual that night, saying he did this to protect his stepfather. Following his trial, Joseph was found not guilty of first-degree murder, but he was found guilty of second-degree murder, as well as felony murder, aggravated child abuse, evidence tampering, and initiating a false report. He faces life in prison without the possibility of parole. Crystal was set to stand trial in March of 2022, but before the trial could take place, while jury selection for it was underway, she pled no contest to the four charges against her. A no contest plea means that she doesn't necessarily admit guilt. She only admits that there's enough evidence there to convict her at trial. She was sentenced to 15 years in prison with credit given for the time served since her 2018 arrest. To this day, Joe Clyde's body has never been found, but... It's definitely believed that foul play is suspected in this case due to the circumstances involved. We are hoping that someone can step forward and have information as to where Joe Clyde's remains are. This little boy, he suffered immense abuse during his entire life. The least we can do for this little boy is put him to rest properly and give him peace in his afterlife, since he never had that during his time here on Earth. Anyone that has information about Joe Clyde or his whereabouts, please contact the Dixon County Sheriff's Office at 615-789-4130. It's case number 201-80404. Dash zero three four, or you can also contact the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation with information as well, and that number is 800-824-3463. Guys, this is a devastating case, and it's one that I've been meaning to cover for a while. 
It's just every time I go to cover this case, I, I get real emotional. And I start tearing up talking about how this little child, five years old, was so horrendously abused and then in the end murdered by the two people that should have been there to love and protect this child above all costs. So guys, do me a favor. Help me get Joe Clyde's story back out there on social media. Someone out there has information and knows where his remains are. We need to locate his remains and we need to put him to rest properly. Um, give the video a like. It does help more people to hear Joe Clyde's story. Hopefully someone will step forward with information that ultimately leads to us being able to give him a proper memorial and lay him to rest in peace. Um, also, if you're not subscribed to the channel yet, consider clicking that subscribe button. It really helps the channel out. And if you ring that notification bell, you'll always be alerted when I post another missing persons video. The most important thing that I'm asking for you to do more than anything is to just, you know, click that share button. Share this to your Facebook, your Twitter, your Instagram, wherever you have social media, guys. It takes one second of your time to do. And it could make all the difference in the world and whether we find out where Joe Clyde's body is and, and whether we can lay him to rest properly or not. Um... Again, it's a devastating case, and someone out there has to have information. I want to remind you guys, you know, no tip is ever too small. You may think it's insignificant, but it's not. Sometimes it's that smallest tip that breaks the case wide open and leads to resolution. So if, if you know anything out there, guys, make sure you make that phone call. Uh, as always, I do want to thank you all so much for tuning in and watching. I appreciate each and every single one of you. Y'all be kind to one another out there, and I'll see you real soon in the next one.